Hello, everyone. Semi-retired Bob here. I talk about the carnivore diet, all things related to the carnivore diet, and miscellaneous odds and ends. I am super excited today because we have Carnivore Kip with us. Hello, Kip. How are you doing today? Doing great. Thanks for having me on, Bob. I really appreciate it. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you here. Um, for those that aren't familiar with you, could you go ahead and give us just a couple of minute introduction? And then if you need a couple more minutes beyond that, to tell us um, how you discovered the carnivore diet. Well, my name's Kip Moore. And uh, I guess I'd have to go all the way back to, you know, birth. Uh, you know, whenever my mom was pregnant with me, she had uh, gestational diabetes. And uh, so pretty much from then until after I was born, I, you know, sugar's been a big part of our life and uh really really unhealthy foods i grew up in south alabama and uh so we ate fried chicken and pretty much everything country food that you could think of and almost nothing was healthy and uh you know so i've struggled with ma weight my whole life and i've tried different diets you know i had success with one before carnivore because i had been off and on keto for uh, uh, maybe a couple years, actually, I'd go on and off and on and off. And I kept having those issues that I hear other people talk about since I've joined the carnivore community is I would, uh, uh, keep caving in because of the different sweets and things like that. And, uh, like trying to make different keto sweets, it would make me want the real thing. And so, you know, fast forward to last year, uh, and I'm 29, by the way, I'll be 30 next month. Uh, but fast forward till January, I decided I wanted to do something bizarre. And that was to try the carnivore diet. And uh, I had heard people like Dr. Ken Berry talk about it. And back from whenever I did keto, and then I had heard, you know, uh, someone that I like to listen to, uh, Joe Rogan, uh, on his podcast and different people. And that led me down the whole rabbit hole of listening to different people. And, uh, after I did that for a while, uh, I researched it for a little bit. I just decided, you know what, it's a new year. It's time for a new me. And I kept telling myself 2023 is going to be my year. And so I decided let's start. So January 2nd, I started and the rest is history. Excellent. Excellent. Um, so just to keep everybody in the loop here, um, you started on January the 2nd. Correct. How much, how much weight have you lost now so far? Today I'm down 72 pounds and it hasn't quite been four months yet. I'm very excited. Excellent. Excellent job. As I do on my live streams, that's definitely worth a high five and a fist Appreciate bump. Appreciate it. Good job. Thank you. Good job. Um, before we get into some other topics, because you have you have cast iron cast iron in the title of your channel, absolutely. And I cook with a cast iron skillet, but I have a question because I've been having a devil of a time. Everything mm -hmm. else goes great, the seasoning looks great, everything comes out great. Why the heck can't I fry an egg in that thing without it sticking all over heck? Okay, so what I learned. When you're frying an egg, you you initially want to get your skillet hot to about a medium high heat. So go about six or seven. But then before you put the egg on there, uh, turn the skillet way down to like one or two because the cast iron, it retains heat so well. And you're not, it doesn't take a lot to, you know, crisp up an egg. It's not like a steak. If you're cooking a steak, you'd want to keep it at six or seven and get a good sear on it. And if it's a thick steak, just flip it more often. But with eggs, you want to lower the heat down, uh, down to one or two right before you start cooking. And then put you some, if you like cooking with butter, or sometimes I cook with tallow or lard and uh, put that in there. Uh, uh, egg cooked with lard is amazing. But uh, that's one way to cook an egg and have it not stick. 
Okay, thanks. I just I've been waiting for a couple of weeks to talk to you ever since I decided to to invite you on because everything else goes great with my cast iron because I I didn't actually start cooking for myself till about five years ago, and uh, I just got the cast iron a year and a half ago and everything has been going great except eggs and i just <laughs> i hate the fact that every time i try to cook eggs they stick all over heck and then i'm left with a mess to try and clean up okay one of the big things i talk about on my channel is the why people do this um, my why of course was to be able to stand up for more than two and a half minutes without severe pain um and yes the the basic I want to be a little healthier. I want to lose a little weight is an okay starting point for why. But I like to tell people, you know, you got to have a bigger why in front of you, you know, whether it's play with the grandkids or take your dog on a walk or, you know, go to the zoo, whatever it is, you have to have a very specific goal in mind and keep that in front of you at all times to keep yourself from falling off the wagon. So if you know what it is, would you mind talking a little bit about what your why is? Absolutely. If it wasn't for my why, I wouldn't still be, uh, I wouldn't still be staying strong on this journey. So, um, you know, for years I tried to do it for just myself and it wasn't carnivore. I did different diets and I did like keto and I did low calorie and things like that. But after my daughter was born, cause she's 14 months old right now, but after she was born, um, you know, we went through a transitional period of, you know, just trying to survive cause we're, it's our first kid. And, you know, so, I mean, of course we were eating whatever, just trying to get any energy that we could, uh, cause we didn't get as much sleep as we used to get. And then, uh, I got to thinking all throughout the year last year, like something has got to stick. Like I have to do something that sticks, not just for me, but for my baby girl, because when I, I was, you know, at the weight that I weighed, there's no way that I would be able to do normal things with her that I want to do. Like I would feel weird going to a daddy daughter dance with her. I mean, I would still do it, but I'd probably be miserable and uh, I wouldn't be able to go to six flags with her and ride rides or I w there's so many things that I'd miss out on and uh, so many trips that I wouldn't get to take. Or I've even been in fear that what about whenever she is old enough to get married and she wants me there to walk her down the aisle and stuff like that. Would I, would I actually be able to do that? And so the more that I thought about that, I was like, I've got to do something extreme. And I'm so thankful that uh, in January, I decided to try the carnivore diet. And I initially was thinking that it would just be, you know, just a few weeks and Hey, I'm right now I have so much, uh, I've been so encouraged by the community and I've been so encouraged by the results that I've been getting and the way that I feel that I don't see me stopping this for the rest of my life. Excellent. That is a very good. Why young man? Definitely. Definitely. Thank you. Um, so do you mind me asking what you do for a living? Sure. I work in accounting and the bad, the bad thing about that, the good thing is since I live in South Alabama, it's really, really hot here. We, we have probably what we call three weeks of winter and it's not even that cold. And then it gets pretty much hot again. So the good thing about being in accounting is I'm out, I'm inside and I'm not in the heat all day, but it's also a curse because I sit at my desk all day and I'm just typing away and crunching numbers and stuff like that. And that doesn't help me, you know, move my body. And then we have uh, office parties at work and there's always someone bringing food to work and we're sitting in the AC eating donuts and, uh, you know, working in accounting 
uh, it's a great job, but I have to I have to remember to get myself moving again, kind of like you've been doing. You've been moving so much, and I enjoy watching your videos. Well, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, accounting. So, have you talked to? I can't remember his name, but Platte River Keto. He's in, he's in a tax account. Uh, it, does he have a YouTube channel? If so, yes. I'll look him up. Yes, he does. It's called Platte River Keto. Okay. You two probably get along great because you're both in the bookkeeping business. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I want to talk about this cruise you went on just a little bit here because uh, it looked like you ate quite a bit. I did. I, I did. I sure did. I overate. Uh, even I, I feel like uh, maybe I know that a lot of people say eat as much as you want. But, you know, I've had years and years of eat like gorging myself with, you know, all the sweets and all the desserts or whatever. So whenever I see that unlimited food up there, I, I guess the that side of me seen it as a challenge and uh, like challenge accepted. Let's just eat, eat, eat. But I'm thankful that it kept me on the carnivore diet and I was able to stay strict. But I also did gain six pounds while I was on the cruise, which could have been a mixture of some other things, uh, you know, maybe some of the oils that they were using. And I ate m way more cheese than I normally would. And I do feel like that cheese, uh, for me personally, it kind of, I don't know, it bloats me, makes me feel bloated. And that could have all contributed to the pounds that I gained on the cruise. Yeah, and how how quickly did that six pounds fall back off? In no time, like it was gone. Probably within three or four days, it was uh, it was just gone. Yeah. See, um, I just I have to in, inject something here. Have you ever um, watched Professor Bart K's channel? I've recently started watching it within the past month, but I didn't know that much about him until recently. But I am loving his videos, and you can tell he's far more intelligent than this country boy because i'm just a country boy from alabama and he's just he blows my mind yeah if you scroll back into his timeline a little bit and find the thing that he did back in january of this year he did a little experiment because he is occasionally a guest speaker for bella's steak and butter dang and they do a thing there called priming where you literally stuff as much food in your face as you can for two weeks to, to help with the, the conversion to the carnivore diet. And now they don't do cheese and that I guess I'm guessing the cheese is what got gotcha you because so. he spent, he spent 14 days stuffing between 6,000 and 6,500 calories in his face every day wow. and lost and lost 23 pounds. Wow. That's, yeah. a, that's so, crazy. So, you know, if you get, if you stick to very strict, you know, like beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, or like I do lion diet, which is just ruminant meat, salt, and water, you, it's very hard to overeat as long as you're having the muscle meat with its associated fat because fat won't let you overeat it too much. Correct. But cheese, cheese will probably do it to you, but it looks like you had a really good time and we could sit there and speculate all day about how much weight you would have actually gained if you had eaten that quantity, if that, that volume of all the cakes and cookies and goodies that they Ooh. have on those cruises. It would have been rough. Cause I know what those cruises look like and, and you could have sat there, you could have just pulled a chair up right next to the chocolate fountain and gra just started grabbing pieces of cake and dunking them under the chocolate fountain. <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching a lot of your, uh, a lot of your, your cooking videos and you tend to use a lot of smokers. And I have Absolutely. to tell you that that trailer mounted smoker of yours, that's an awesome machine. Oh, I have yes. no place for something like that here in the city, but that is a that is an amazing machine. Um, for any of my viewers out there that haven't actually that don't know a whole lot about smokers, um, do you think you could spend a couple of minutes talking about 
what, you know, for those that are just beginning, what kind of smoker would you recommend for them? <clears throat> well, it really depends on, uh, well, you could talk about budgets or, but then beyond budgets, there's different smokers in each budget, but, uh, it really depends on if the person is looking for really convenient, like set it and forget it, or if they're looking to learn the art of barbecue, because if you won't set it and convict and forget it, there's nothing wrong with that. But I mean, you're kind of just, it's kind of like having an oven. You're just putting it in there and then it comes out and you get great smoked meat, but there's nothing wrong with that. Some people don't have time to, watch a fire for 10 hours and, you know, keep adding wood to it and things like that. So I would say for a lot of people, uh, I would start with either something like the charcoal grill that I've been cooking with recently and, or a pellet grill, because a pellet grill is you just put the pellets in there and, you know, you can just set your little temperature on there and you can go to sleep at night and then you can wake up and a miracle happens and you've got Boston butts and you got briskets and you feel like you really, really accomplished something. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if you want the truest of the true, true barbecue flavor, you have to go with an offset uh, wood smoker, kind of like that trailer pit that I was uh showing y'all in that video uh, and that you're actually feeding a fire and you're having to put big logs in it. You know, I put a couple logs every 45 minutes and sometimes every hour and you have to feed it, but there's no flavor in barbecue like cooking with real wood. And I cook with different types of wood, but that's how you get your true flavor. But I would start with a pellet grill or a little charcoal grill, or you could go to somewhere like Academy and get you a, a wood smoker. They have some cheaper ones. Uh, if you want to go ahead and try that to learn, because if you can learn to cook on an offset smoker, then you can cook on anything. Like once you learn that you can, you can hand me any grill just about on the planet and I can cook with it because I can cook with a wood pit, but it takes more time. Excellent. Well, hopefully I've got a viewer or two out there that uh, that looks into that. Um, I have noticed that in a lot of your uh, cooking videos, you tend to use garlic. And I'm assuming that you don't have any problems with garlic yourself. That you haven't noticed any, any inflammation or pain coming from that garlic? Uh, yeah, I haven't noticed anything. My inflammation's been getting better. Cause I've had, you know, different issues, uh, cause I have like autoimmune condition, uh, that, I mean, we can get into that if you want to, but, uh, um, I haven't noticed any issues from the garlic and thankfully I haven't cause I love the way garlic tastes and it was hard enough for me to get rid of the sugar in my rubs and it would just about crush my soul if I had to get rid of garlic too. Uh, cause I just love it. Okay, and very briefly, could you uh, give us, I know you use salt and you use pepper and you use garlic. Um, and I don't, I don't expect you to, to give away any trade secrets, but <laughs> can you give my uh, viewers an idea of what kind of spices you might or might not be putting in in, in amounts that you probably aren't going to disclose into your rubs so that they can get just a general idea of what kind of spices they might want to try. Yeah, I, I pick with my viewers a lot and say, you know, uh, I can't tell you my trade secrets because, uh, I mean, I, I, I cooked a lot of bad barbecue before I cooked good barbecue. And, uh, you know, I spent a lot of money on me and trying different seasonings and it didn't work out. So I can't just give it to everybody, but I will say, uh, I will say that I do use a lot of salt and pepper and garlic. Uh, sometimes I use onion powder. I know some people on the carnivore diet don't use that at all, and that's fine if that's you. Uh, but I like using uh, uh, granulated uh, jalapeno powder or 
uh, cayenne pepper, but I don't use them at the same time because it's two totally different pepper flavors. And if you want color, you like a good red mahogany color, you can use paprika or smoked paprika. But I don't like to use brown sugar at all anymore because I used to put brown sugar in everything. And that's part of what I want to do on my channel is show people that uh, you can still make great barbecue without sugar because just about every store that you go to, if you look on the shelves and you buy and you look at the rub and read the ingredients, the first or the second ingredient is sugar because they put brown sugar in it. There's some things that aren't like that. But even when they're not, usually they have soybean oil or something like that in it. And I'm like, you got it's, this is rub. What do you need soybean oil in it for? This should just be, you know, a few ingredients. Yeah. OK, excellent. Well, that gives my people a chance to start. And what I would suggest to them is just get the spices that you have tested and know aren't going to give you a reaction. And then right. start playing around with mixes on how much of each to put in. And Big, you'll come up with your very own style. Uh, start with your salt and pepper. Get the salt and pepper to the amount that you like. You know, start with teaspoons and do a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of pepper. And then taste it and see if you need more salt or more pepper. And then once you get that dialed in, write it down. And after you write that down... Then you can start, hey, I'm going to add a little garlic and see how that does and so on. But start with salt and pepper because those two, nothing beats salt and pepper. Absolutely. Um, so, of course, you know, the main question that everybody always asks, I don't understand why people ask this. But because no matter who you talk to, whether it's on the street or online, or wherever it happens to be, the second somebody finds out you're doing a carnivore diet, they want to know, how's your blood work? Have you had any blood work done recently? Uh, actually, I haven't had a chance to do blood work since I started, because I started in January, and my uh, physician, he does blood work every six months. And, uh, cause I'm, you know, I had been getting blood work every six months for a while, even before I started. And, uh, so he does it every six months, but my checkup, I think it's May 22nd. I know it's in May. I have to look at my calendar and I've even had pe plenty of people on my channel. What about your blood work? What about, what about your blood work? I haven't, it's, I've only been doing this right at four months. I haven't had a chance, but I'm very excited. And I just can't wait to walk in there and him be like, dude. Who are, who are you? Because when he seen me in uh, December or November, I, I was a lot heavier than I am right now. Excellent. Now, be warned, because you've only been doing it for four months, because I had my blood work at four months, and everything was moving in the right direction. <clears throat> but at the four-month mark, my triglycerides were still really high, <clears throat> and my HDO was still quite low. Everything else was moving in the right direction, but it wasn't quite there yet. And then while I was down in North Carolina for the winter, I went to a private clinic and got them rechecked again when I was at the eight month mark and mm -hmm. everything was in normal range. So just be prepared. You may not, it may not be quite as good as you're hoping for at the four month mark, but you, sh you should be able to see improvements in everything. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't understand that, you know, when, why, do, why do people care about what your blood work is? My first question to anybody is how do you feel? I feel well, tell amazing. Us, tell us, Kip, how do you feel? Uh, like a different person, <laughs> like a different person. And, and I'm not saying that I'm small and running on the beach or running up mountains or anything like that. I still have a long ways to go. I mean, I still weigh uh, 414 pounds, but I was 486 pounds for like almost four months ago. So, I mean, from 486 pounds, that's getting close to 500 pounds to uh, 414. I, it feels a world of different. I lost over two 30-pound uh, sacks of dog food 
and I'm working on my third sack of dog food. And uh, it just every day gets better and better. And yes, the scale doesn't move every day. But then if I check it like a week later, it just goes down, down, down. And I just feel amazing. Yeah. And here very soon, I'm predicting sometime within the next three weeks, the first number on your scale is going to change to a three. It oh, may man. only be it may only be three ninety nine point nine, but it's <laughs> going to be a three. And I guarantee you, that's going to be a day we're celebrating. Make sure you make a video that day and say, "Yep, Bob was right. I feel <laughs> fantastic today because that first number switched from a four to a three. Because I remember good, how I felt when my number switched from a three to a two, and now it's of course switched from a two to a one." Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've uh, actually told uh, my viewers that I have like a little personal challenge for myself that my birthday is in May is uh, at the end of May, but I have a personal challenge for myself to get to in the 300 club by my birthday. And I think I can do it. I need to lose about 14 more pounds, 15 more pounds in a month's time, but I think I can do it. At the rate you've been losing, you will probably get there. My birthday is a little quicker than that. Mine's on May the 10th. Um, <laughs> and I'm just a little bit older than you are. Mm -hmm. uh, you said you're going to be 30 this year? Yes, May 27th, I'll be 30. Yeah. Excellent. Um, you can't see it because I got the green screen going right now. <laughs> but uh, here, let me see if I can pull this back and you can see it. No, it's too oh, yeah, there you can. You can sort of see it. You see that? metal poster on the wall mm -hmm. i see it that that's a rush poster and that poster is probably 15 years older than you are wow wow that's crazy uh, and yeah, look I, and, and and hey you're uh as good as you've been doing you probably feel as young as i do um i actually because i remember how i felt because i was discharged from the uh from the army when i was uh 21 years old because mm -hmm. i went in the army i literally i graduated from high school on a saturday <laughs> i had sunday off and i left for basic training on monday wow there was there was no time in between and then it was in 1983 that i got kicked out of the army because i had gout and my slow descent into bad health started then so i uh I feel better than I have in pretty much my entire life because I just checked it. I still have my high school band jacket hanging in the closet yeah. and it's a little baggy on me, mm -hmm. yeah. but uh, you know, that's enough about me today. We are talking about you and what you alluded to it just a little bit ago. Um, other than weight, because weight is, you know, that's obviously the first thing anybody wants to talk about. What other problems had you been having that you found carnivore diet has been helping you with? Um, because of my autoimmune condition, it's called sarcoidosis. It's affected like lymph nodes in my lungs a while. But I have a scar right here on my neck. A while back, they thought that I had cancer. They thought it was lymphoma and I had to go through like it was a six weeks process of all this different testing and and so on. And I had to do like CT scans, PET scans, all kind of stuff. And it was a scary time for me. And uh, they finally found out that it was sarcoidosis. And, you know, um, honestly, at the time, I was just thankful it wasn't cancer. But uh, then, you know, I got to realizing like this, you know, autoimmune diseases can affect your joints and things like that. And I noticed when I'm at work sometimes, it would be hard to move. Uh, you can't really see what I'm, I, I talk with my hands a lot, but uh, I would uh, notice I would have issues with my wrist and my fingers and um, getting sore. And then my shoulder, especially my right shoulder. Uh, I've been to like, um, I even forget what they called, but I've been to different uh, physical therapists and I've been to orthopedic doctors and they've looked at my shoulder and they've said that I have like arthritis in it and that I'll need a shoulder replacement by the time I'm 40 because 
the sarcoidosis and everything has kind of caused um, it to eat away at itself way faster than it should. And it, my shoulder looks like I'm way older than I am. And my shoulder's been hurting very, very bad for like three or four years. And a lot of times I'll pull on it like this way and this way and stretch it. And, uh, and I have no strength in that shoulder, like going this way, it's like dead limp. Like my daughter could push against it and I couldn't stop her. And since I've started the carnivore diet, well, honestly, within a few weeks, all the pain in my shoulder just vanished. Like it completely went away. And now I'm not going to say that I have all the strength back in my shoulder. I need to, you know, do maybe some lifting or some, you know, the bands or something to strengthen it up. But the pain that's been bothering me and I've been take I had been taking ibuprofen and, uh, Tylenol and other different things trying to help with the pain. I don't have to take nothing. Ever since I started within two weeks, I haven't took Tylenol or ibuprofen, none. Excellent. Excellent. Um, so before we wrap up here, is there anything about yourself that you would like my viewers to know? About myself. Or your channel or anything, you know what? Talk about whatever you want to talk about here. Well, I feel like when I'm talking about my channel, I am talking about myself. Uh, so I guess I would want them to know that I guess I'll talk to the viewer that might be struggling and thinking about doing this for themselves or if they're severely overweight or morbidly obese like I am. Uh, you don't have anything to lose if you're in that situation. Uh, give this a try because clearly whatever you've been doing uh, hasn't been working for however long. So give this a try and do, do like I did. Just say, I'm going to give it a, a month or if you need to do 60 days or whatever. And you can go back to my, my first video and even I can see a difference from that video to now and uh, just what change, taking vegetables and taking carbs and taking sugar out of my diet and eating meat. And I love meat. Like I've told people before that if I was, you know, in prison and they asked me what I want for my last meal, it would be a big old steak and shrimp. So just, uh, I just want people to know that there's a way to, you know, better health that's beyond what doctors have always said and beyond what we've been told our whole lives because I've been told for so long, low calorie, low calorie, low calorie. And there's times that I've done different diets and I've tried to starve myself, you know, to, to lose weight and, I would do good for a week or two and then I would just completely cave and gain more weight than I had lost. And ever since I've started this carnivore journey, this has been the first diet that I've ever done where I'm four months in and I'm not even thinking about stopping. Like I'm four months in and I'm more motivated than ever. And I'm looking forward to the life that I can have with my daughter and I hope that if there's somebody out there that is thinking about starting this, give it a try because you might just amaze yourself and you might be making your own YouTube videos in a few months talking about how great it's been for you because I'm just a regular guy and I started this journey and I was so excited about the results that I decided to pick up my camera. Excellent. And speaking of picking up your camera, um, of course, I'll put your channel name underneath your picture there on this video when I put it out. But go ahead and tell everybody where they can find you. Are you just on YouTube or are you doing some other social medias as well? I, right now, I'm just on YouTube and you can find me at Carnivore Kip. Um, 
It's my channel name is Carnivore Kip Barbecue and Cast Iron. But if you just type in at Carnivore Kip, you can find me. I've thought about, you know, branching out to Facebook and all that stuff. But for right now, so early in the journey, I've been just I've been plenty busy with YouTube and I try to interact with everyone on there. So if you ever check out my channel and ask me a question, I'll do everything I can to comment back to you. Okay, I want to thank you for coming over today, um, Kip. It's been a, a real pleasure to have you here on the channel. Don't forget, folks, get out there. Be 1% better today, tomorrow, every day. And don't forget to go over to Carnivore Kip's channel and check him out. And make sure you say thank you down in the comments to thank him for his time today.